Okay. Um, <laughs> so, uh, thank you uh, very much. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, thank you, Stuart. Uh, I, I would have loved for you to just keep going on and on and on. Um, and uh, so apologies for what feels like an interruption. Uh, hopefully, in some ways, it'll it'll be a communication that, uh, and I know uh, Eunice has uh, much to discuss. So the the title I came up with today uh, is Batai's Nietzsche and the Aestheticization of the Political. Um, when when Eunice asked me, I guess a little over a month ago, to talk about Nietzsche and Bataille, um, I was a little uh, reluctant, although I've been obsessing about certain uh, aspects of, of Nietzsche and Bataille of late. Um, so uh, I, what I wanna just kind of acknowledge right off the bat is maybe uh, Eunice assumed I could just kind of uh, talk about Nietzsche and Bataille as I have before. And I just wanna say that uh, I have a chapter on Nietzsche and a chapter on Bataille in my book, Writing with Blood, where I'm kind of connecting uh, the death of Socrates to the death of uh, Mishima uh, with Nietzsche and Bataille uh, in the middle. But I don't want to uh, repeat anything I talked about 20 years ago. Um, I want to think through uh, these issues specifically as they relate to the Nietzsche circle and its stated mission, um, which those of you that may or may not be familiar, with the Nietzsche circle and how long has the circle been around Eunice? When did it start? Since 2005. 2005. Yes. Yeah, someone was asking me yesterday, how long has it been around? And, and um, well, yeah, okay. So since 2005, um, the idea of, of looking at this very specific aesthetic concern in Nietzsche has always been the, the kind of core mission uh, as stated in, in, in the mission statement. So the Nietzsche circle is a philosophical community whose primary concern um, is the intersection of dimensions of aesthetics. Um, again, I'm, this uh, is blocking my view here. Uh, to respond to the crisis of art and reflect on arts bearing on life, which concerned Nietzsche from his first to his last works. The Nietzsche circle is devoted to the question, what kind of art is vital to our existence? So I wanna start immediately from that notion that art is vital to our existence and I wanna think through um, the idea uh, of Nietzschean aesthetics, um, but also I wanna kind of start with, um, well, let, me, let me pause that and be very clear that I don't have a clear agenda here today. What I wanna talk about are merely some texts and some ideas that I find of absolute urgent necessity. Um, so I'm just sharing questions here. I don't have any answers. I don't have a clear program. Um, nothing workable, as one might say, um, this sense of community. Um, so I do have a sense of uh, uh, the unworking community, as Nasi might say. Um, if I can click on the next. Oh, wait. <laughs> so, uh, three quotes from Nietzsche that I want us to keep in mind in terms of this notion of aesthetics and the political. Uh, the first one is from his first book, oh, uh, a sentence that's repeated twice, uh, first in, in section five and again in, in 24. Um, I like to remember this in the English as existence can only be justified as an aesthetic phenomenon. Um, obviously here in, in the German, um, you know, Dasein und die Welt, uh, das Dasein und die Welt. Uh, but this, this idea of, um, he, and again, he, Nietzsche is thinking of, of Hamlet uh, when this first appears, and the idea of, of art being this healing sorceress, that in some ways one's life can only be uh, justifiable, one can only go on living if one understands oneself as uh, perhaps a character in a play that someone else has been written. This is where the doctrine of eternal recurrence or the idea of eternal recurrence is, is, is again itself an aesthetic phenomenon. If you're living a play, but it's a play that must be played over and over and over again, um, the degree to which that becomes the greatest weight, the greatest stress that one must act accordingly. Um, another passage uh, from Zarathustra, 
um, one that really struck me, I suppose, when I was age 18, uh, in terms of trying to think through a Nietzschean politics. Uh, the state, what is that? Well then, now open your ears for me, for now I say to you my word about the death of peoples. State is the name for the coldest of all cold monsters. Coldly it tells lies, and this lie crawls out of its mouth. I, the state, am the people. This is from Zarathustra. So is this Nietzsche speaking? Is this Nietzsche Zarathustra speaking? Um, but this idea of the death of peoples, the emergence of the state, and the lie that it is the people. And then finally, the um, other passage that gets so much attention in terms of Nietzsche and whether or not he's to be understood as a political thinker or as an apolitical thinker, uh, from Beyond Good and Evil, section 208, the time for small politics is over. The very next century will bring the fight for the dominion of the earth, the compulsion to large scale politics, or the, the contrast between kleine Politik and Grossen Politik. Um, so with these three ideas in mind, um, been trying to think through um, our own uh, current context, and I'll talk about that in a few minutes. Um, but first and foremost, uh, the political appropriation of Nietzsche um, is well documented, of course. Um, Hitler apparently made seven trips to the Nietzsche archive. The image on the left um, is Nietzsche's sister, Elizabeth Förster Nietzsche, um, who greeted um, who greeted Hitler at the archive uh, in the fall of 1934. And the image on the right, uh, one sees, of course, a, a sculpture, or uh, Nietzsche might say an Apollinean image, uh, sculpted image uh, of the, the thinker. And uh, the photograph shows uh, Hitler uh, looking at him. Um, now, of course, um, by this time, uh, the relationship of Hitler to um, art is most manifest in um, the way in which his obsession with Wagner um, carries out with his identification. So here he is at the Festspielhaus in Bayreuth, um, and the image on the right where he's uh, uh, a Wagnerian uh, hero. So the, the Nazi uh, use of, of myth itself and the power of symbol um, is uh, at, the, at the very heart of the, of the, the phenomenon. Um, and I would say that it's no one other than Georges Bataille who has uh, the most powerful engagement uh, with trying to wrestle um, Nietzsche away from the Nazis. Um, I, one anecdote that, that comes to mind is Carl Jung's statement as he was giving his uh, uh, seminars on Zarathustra in Switzerland. Uh, he told the story of a Nazi coming up to him and saying, uh, Professor Jung, um, I've heard you, you say that our swastika is backwards. And, and Jung uh, claims that he responded, no, not for you. Um, it's going in the right direction for you. Uh, in other words, it was going backwards as a solar symbol. Um, we could also look at Hermann Hesse's uh, attempts to, to um, retrieve uh, Nietzsche from National Socialism. But I would say that Georges Bataille's efforts to um, recover Nietzsche's legacy um, and show its incompatibility with, with National Socialism or fascism more generally um, is a, a really uh, instructive uh, for us. Um, but as Stuart has just talked about, um, Nietzsche's first engage, or excuse me, Bataille's first engagement with Nietzsche uh, really occurs sometime around 1922, 1923, with Shestov very much being the, the mentor who initiates him into uh, the world of, of Nietzsche. Um, although he, he co-translates uh, with Shestov's daughter um, that text in, in 1925, um, we don't really see um, him writing about Nietzsche in his own voice. Um, however, one can find uh, some kind of a Nietzschean influence, nonetheless, in Bataille's engagement with the emergence of fascism. Um, one could think of the, uh, the right-wing militia or paramilitary um, riot uh, of the 6th of February, 1934, as uh, bringing home to, to, 
tip a tie and, and, and those sharing the urban life with him, uh, the need to confront fascism as it was uh, threatening to uh, go from, from Spain and Italy uh, onto Germany and now into to France. Um, so uh, in La Critique uh, Sociale, um, he has a, a, a couple of essays, uh, the, the structure of psychology or the, the structural uh, psychological structure of fascism, fascism, where he looks at a Freudian, give, offers a Freudian reading, um, in addition to the kind of obvious Marxist reading he had, uh, that he assumes in fascism. Um, and uh, then he becomes involved uh, with uh, counterattack, uh, this collaboration with the surrealists um, a, a couple of years later, um, very short-lived um, engagement. So just a couple, um, a couple uh, quotes from some text by Bataille that show his, uh, his response to, to fascism. Um, first of all, from 1934, uh, an attempt at a definition of fascism. Uh, so I'm gonna read this relatively lengthy quote here. Quote, as an organized power, fascism is the regime in which sovereignty, sovereignty belongs, in fact, if not by right, to a militarized party which delegates the sovereignty to its leader for life. This has been achieved in the Italian and German societies. A fascist party gathers up the elements of all classes under the imperative direction of a single leader. This direction assumes determinate effective bonds between party members and leader, such that each party member, under the sway of the irrational attraction, identifies with the leader who incarnates not only the party, but society as such, the entire nation and whose existence is situated above the multitude like the gods. So I think uh, this, this attempt to define fascism, fascism uh, from 1934 is really helpful even to today as uh, it's, it, it's very easy to identify someone uh, and dismiss someone as a fascist, but um, this gives a, a really interesting working definition. Um, let's see, if I can shift to the next. Um, and in another uh, text around that time, um, written in the, uh, along with Pierre Kahn, um, the fatherland or the earth, quote, a great many men love their country, sacrifice themselves and die for her. A Nazi can love the Reich to the point of fanaticism, but what we love, even if we are French by origin, is to no degree the French community. It is the human, human community. It is no way, France. It is the earth. We are reclaiming for ourselves the universal consciousness, which is bound to moral liberty and to a solidarity with those who have nothing, just as the nationalist consciousness is tied to bondage and a solidarity with the rich. Around this time, a uh, counterattack broke up with uh, Breton and other surrealist members um, making the very brief statement that included this uh, notion of uh, sur fascism. But the surrealist members of the group counterattack record with satisfaction the disillusion of said group, at the heart of which were manifested sur fascist tendencies and whose purely fascist characters has been revealing itself more flagrantly. Now, I don't wanna get too deep into the woods, uh, no pun intended, um, with Bataille's biography. Um, Michel Surya's uh, biography has already been alluded to by Stuart, um, but I would also strongly recommend Stuart's biography of Bataille, which I actually prefer. Um, if, if one wants to think through the, the life of Bataille, and just as uh, Chestov uh, talked about three notions of, of tragedy for, for Nietzsche, this very same could be said uh, for Bataille. Um, his life was very different from Nietzsche's um, beginning with his relationship to his father and his relationship to organized religion. Uh, very, very different. Uh, moving on later, Nietzsche's rather famous uh, awkwardness at a brothel, um, whereas Bataille was, I don't know if the word comfortable is the right word for how one conducts oneself at a brothel or not, but um, this was not uh, an unfamiliar place to Bataille. So in many ways, uh, perhaps superficial, uh, Bataille and Nietzsche are very, very different people, but in other ways, um, very much uh, comrades, brothers. Um, 
and the identification in writing seems to dissolve. Um, but, um, so these just a couple, uh, this idea of, of sur fascism and, it, and it's uh, that accusation that's been thrown at Bataille. Um, it's, it's in 1937 that we see Bataille really uh, start talking about Nietzsche. And um, again, I don't want to, as I said, get too into the woods in terms of um, Assez Fall, uh, which was at once a literary journal and also a secret society of which we know very little. Um, there was some overlap uh, uh, between the two. And again, I would, I would recommend say Stewart's biography on the participants and the degree of engagement, how long it lasted, uh, what was going on in Bataille's life at this time, his relationship to law in particular. Um, but in the second issue, uh, it was called Nietzsche and the Fascists. And in, uh, in that issue, um, then Nietzsche is, is, is reclaimed uh, from fascism uh, with uh, Bataille accusing um, Elizabeth Furster Nietzsche of, of being a Judas figure. Um, again, as you can see here in the table of contents, Elizabeth Judith Furster. Um, and he bemoans again, precisely that, that image of, of Hitler being welcomed at the archive. Um, and he also confronts uh, Mussolini. Mussolini, by the way, uh, back in 1931, had given Elizabeth Furster Nietzsche uh, some funding for the Nietzsche archive. And of course, Hitler visits in 1934. But in 1937, um, Nietzsche becomes a central uh, point of reference uh, for, for Bataille in terms of his engagement with fascism. Um, this is just one quote from that text uh, that I think conveys some of the, the spirit of, of what he's trying to do here. Quote, fascism and Nietzscheanism are mutually exclusive and are even violently mutually exclusive as soon as each of them is considered in its totality. On one side, life is tied down and stabilized in an endless servitude. On the other, there is not only a circulation of free air, but the wind of a tempest. On one side, the charm of human culture is broken in order to make room for vulgar force. On the other, force and violence are tragically dedicated to this charm. Again, I wanna say that because I think this notion of vulgar force is, is important in terms of how we understand fascism. On one side, the charm of human culture is broken in order to make room for vulgar force. On the other, force and violence are tragically dedicated to this charm. In uh, another issue of Assez Fall, there were really three publications, the third and fourth issues were combined. Um, he has a, a text in there, Bataille has a text in there uh, called Nietzschean Chronicle. And um, quote I'd like to share with you from that today is as follows, quote, the Nietzschean audacity demanding for the figures it creates a power that bows before nothing, that tends to break down old sovereignty's edifice of moral prohibition must not be confused with what it fights. The marvelous Nietzschean kinderland and here he's alluding again to Zarathustra's notion of a kinderland as opposed to a fatherland. Kinderland is nothing less than the place where the challenging of every man's Vaterland takes on a meaning that is no longer impotent negation. I think he may be talking or alluding to in some way what he sees as the failure of democracy or that notion of impotent negation. It is only after Zarathustra that we can ask our children's forgiveness for having been the children of our fathers, end quote. So again, you see the way in which he's claiming Nietzsche has nothing to do with the, the backwards looking uh, fatherland of uh, national socialism. Um, or again, in, in terms of Nietzsche's, or excuse me, uh, Mussolini's notion of uh, uh, the Italian nation state uh, kind of taking up uh, certain Roman mythologies with fascism. Um, so he's, he's insisting on, on Nietzsche's language of a kinderland um, not caring about a fatherland, but a, a kinderland is something that, that moves us forward into the uncertainty of, of a future. Um, around that time, uh, Walter Benjamin was uh, certainly uh, present at the Collage de Sociologie, 
Um, again, I would refer to, to Stuart's uh, biography to understand um, the different groups that Bataille was associated with and the, the College of Sociology and its relationship to Assay Fall, the journal, and Assay Fall, the secret society. Uh, Benjamin was present in those circles there. Um, before his, his uh, suicide, Benjamin had entrusted his uh, text to Bataille uh, to be kind of uh, hid away at the Bibliothèque Nationale where he worked. Um, but uh, Benjamin was very concerned also uh, that the, the methods Bataille was advocating, uh, in particular um, use of, of myth and symbol, um, was itself uh, prey to uh, fascistic tendencies. And here, um, the famous uh, sentence from the work of uh, Art in the Age of Mechanical Reproduction is uh, something that surely Bataille would have been at least aware of uh, his friend perhaps uh, accusing him of. Uh, the logical conclusion of fascism is the introduction of aesthetics into political life. Now what, what Benjamin is talking about here is the idea of uh, the masses rather than advocating for redistribution of wealth and property, uh, that instead they are allowed to express themselves um, in their uh, adoration of the leader, right? And Benjamin uh, says uh, rather enigmatically at the end of that text um, that uh, communism uh, replaces the aestheticization of the political with the politicization of the aesthetic. Um, I would encourage everyone to, to take a look at Simonetta Falasca Zamponi's um, Rethinking the Political, which gives a really great reading of the College of Sociology's uh, understanding and treatment of, of aesthetics and Roger Kelas and George Bataille's later on uh, negotiation of the aesthetic. Um, but uh, I cannot but see some of what uh, Benjamin is concerned about with the emergence of uh, the celebrity politician. Now, of course, Reagan, the movie star, um, was a, a clear step in this direction. Um, but with the, the, the fame of Donald Trump, and the celebrity uh, status um, that he was accorded with uh, popularly saying, you're fired. And I think it's pretty interesting to look here in terms of, uh, uh, again, this notion of simulacra. He, here he is pretending to say you're fired. And uh, that this person emerges um, as, a, as a cultural force on the basis of this, um, this dismissal, this no, you're fired. Um, we have to be, yet again, um, just as just as Bataille was concerned with the appropriation of Nietzsche, um, so too we need to be um, concerned with um, the claiming or the uh, appropriation of Nietzsche uh, by the far right or the alt right. Um, this idea of, of red pilling, the allusion to the matrix. Um, and uh, Viner's uh, claim in Dangerous Mind that uh, Nietzsche and Heidegger um, fit rather well there. And of course, the review uh, in Jacobin magazine, which uh, really uh, claimed that uh, really we need to move beyond Nietzsche and Heidegger because um, of this. I think this is imperative for us to yet again um, re-engage in reclaiming Nietzsche from the fascist appropriation. Uh, there is a need for it yet again because we have reached this moment and this is the moment that I am stuck in or uh, to put it in Shakespeare's terms of course or would it be Shestov's um, that our time is out of joint um, and that we are locked in this moment uh, so it, uh, this takes us to the, the moment uh, on January 6th um, where our Republic uh, was put in peril by fascist for forces. Um, and I think this is some of what Benjamin uh, is concerned about uh, in terms of the uh, irrational unleashing. Um, and again, as, as we've engaged in this notion of what does it mean to incite a riot, right? Um, the incitement to ecstatic expression um, that we see revealed and you see the, the numerous symbols that are on display um, through the, uh, the flags and banners and clothing and of course, the QAnon warrior in many ways uh, represents that, that, uh, that performance, right? That um, in some ways, uh, the, uh, uh, 
the, the aesthetic has been uh, politicized uh, the, here, um, culminating, of course, with him uh, reaching the seat of power. Um, and so we see in, in that vulgarity, again, the vulgar force that Bataille uh, was concerned about or contrasting uh, with the, a more truly and authentically uh, Nietzschean um, counter movement. And here we see um, how demos, um, is it uh, the people? Um, are they a mob? Um, and this mystery, if you will, that still remains in terms of what exactly was their leader doing? They were acting, uh, they all said the QAnon warrior has expressed regret, but uh, has claimed that he felt that he was under orders from his leader uh, to do just this. Um, they say, they say that Trump was watching this. It's hard to imagine he wasn't, as I think all of us were. Um, but that uh, as excited and euphoric Trump was, he became disillusioned by, why, by what he saw ultimately as low class, uh, low class um, folks breaking in there. And of course, this uh, disgusting image of someone wearing a sweatshirt that would actually say Camp Auschwitz, uh, Mach Mike Fry. Uh, that they would engage in, in such an aesthetics. So um, I wanna conclude with just, a, a, again, the acknowledgement of current uh, anti-fascist movements and the need to think through um, the emergent reemergence of fascism in contemporary culture. I think Bataille's definition of fascism uh, is still a, a working definition that's very instructive um, on the streets of New York, uh, for instance, uh, uh, cosmopolitan uh, anti-fascist groups such as uh, Brigada 71, which is linked, uh, of course, with the New York Cosmos, uh, a, a soccer club that I'm very much associated with. Um, you see the iconography of this. And again, I would, there's a, a, about a two thirds of a page in Stewart's biography where he starts talking about sport, um, which always begs the question to me of, you know, was Bataille a soccer fan at all? But those notions of community that one finds in ultras groups or supporters groups is also manifest on the street in terms of their own um, anti-fascist engagement. And just in terms of their own uh, nod to anti-fascist symbol uh, and myth, um, one, might be, uh, one might notice here um, the use of the three arrows from the Iron Front associated with the Social Democratic Party and uh, the, the use of the two flags, which uh, comes from anti-fascist action, which was originally associated with the Communist Party of Germany. Um, and the, the question of, uh, even though this is a, a, a supporters group uh, for a soccer club, you see the baseball bat there with the words, fuck fascists. And over in the bottom left there, chinga la migra, uh, which we could translate as uh, fuck the border patrol. Um, again, a notion of cosmopolitanism, of refusal of boundaries, um, national identity that Bataille and counterattack were insisting upon, and one that uh, Nietzsche seems to be advocating with the idea of being a good European rather than a good German. Uh, so what I'm trying to get at here is not anything coherent, nothing programmatic, um, but I just want to share with you um, these texts that have been, uh, I've been obsessing over and with as I try to think through um, this moment that we're stuck in, this sense of time being out of joint, um, politically, of course, uh, with the pandemic, but also the, the crisis uh, that our republic uh, faces right now. But I'd like to leave with um, a quotation from Holdeving. Um, you may have noticed the Pope actually uh, used this, although he claimed, I believe, that he, he thought it was in Hyperion, not Patmos, but where the danger is also grows, grows the saving power. I think the critique of Bataille as surfascist um, in many ways uh, makes that an unavoidable uh, danger in some ways, where the danger is also grows the saving power. And I think in Bataille's uh, understanding of what we might call Nietzschean or tragic myth, um, that is precisely the situation we find ourselves in, as like Hamlet, uh, we may be struggling to um, allow art to provoke uh, action, to allow us to, to move beyond 
um, the nihilistic uh, inactivity of being overwhelmed by uh, being in, stuck in a time out of joint. And with that, I will say thank you and thank you. hand it over to Eunice. Oh, thank, thank, thank you, David. You.